A very good evening to uh, Dr. Mahani and my fellow cosmates. Today I'm here to present to you my assignment on HMEC 5233 Pedagogical Approaches to Early Childhood Setting. I'm Tiong Pei from Miri Learning Center and I've been teaching in a uh, local preschool for five years now. Now, for introduction, scaffolding is normally the terms that we use in our in construction that saying that is a temporary structure used to support work in the construction site and for repair and building that will be taken down when the building is finished. But in terms of education, scaffolding is first used by David Wood, Jerome Brunner and Gail Ross in 1976 to refer to a process that allows a child to solve a problem perform a task or accomplish a goal which would be beyond his ability. Gibbons defines scaffolding as a temporarily purposeful, responsive support that helps learners to move towards new skills, concepts or levels of understanding. And for Vygotsky, Vygotsky defines the zone of proximal development as the distance between the actual development level as determined by independent problem solving and the level of potential development as determined through problem solving under adult supervision or in collaboration with more knowledgeable peers. Now, let's look at the theory of underlying theory of scaffolding. Zone of proximal development is a concept that was developed by Lev Vygotsky that is commonly regarded as the theoretical foundation of scaffolding. Vygotsky defines zone of proximal development as the distance between the actual development level as determined by independent problem solving and the level of potential development as de determined through problem solving under adults guidance or in collaboration with more capable peers. Now this is the uh, zone of proximal development uh, the ZPD uh, uh, by Vygotsky. As we can see, that ZPD is located between the actual development and the potential development of a child. And this level, uh, this level in between is the zone of proximal development. And Vygotsky theory stress on the role of social interaction in cognitive development, and he believed that social learning precedes development. And the instruction will focus on each child's ZPD to be challenging enough to help the child develop new skills by building on the one that has been mastered by them. Now, how, how, do, uh, how do scaffolding work? At, at the first place, the teachers need to know the foundation knowledge and identify where and what the children can do. And then the teacher will then give the children a new task. The task is designed to that children because uh, that is the problem that the children cannot solve by themselves. And through scaffolding, assistance will be provided by teacher or a more skillful peers. And at the end of the day, when new knowledge is acquired, the, ch the children will be able to do by themselves uh, after the scaffolding, then the scaffolding will be removed from there. Now, let's look at the importance of scaffolding. Scaffolding is to provide support that allow children to actively participate in and gain skill at a task that they will be unable to complete by themselves. Now, let's look at the three areas here. In terms of critical thinking, how, how are we going to scaffold children to achieve critical thinking? We can use prompts, support and models to train children in developing complex thinking skills. And Bloom Taxonomy can be used to train higher order thinking skills. And in terms of literacy, we can use high support strategy versus low support strategies. And by the end of the day, we aim to have more low support strategies because we want the children to move on with more knowledge. Now, for instructional scaffolding, it is to improve the children's gain in vocabulary. Collaborative learning, 
Now, group work that enable maximize learning with peers. It will boost the development of critical thinking in the children, and the children will tend to achieve higher level thinking and retain information longer. Now, scaffolding in reaching children's zone of proximal development. Now, um, assess prior knowledge. We need to allow the children to share the idea and experience on the concept of study. And we can give hints and suggestions if they are unable to relate to the concept. And then we can use visual aids to help the children. Pictures, charts, graphic organizers can be used. Graphic organizers is to guide the children to organize ideas and grasp concepts. And cooperative learning, we can use Think Passion and Turn and Talk to allow children to have opportunity to share what they have learned with their friends. And we can constant, constantly ask questions to check on the level of understanding of the children. And we, we will use uh, the 5H1W question and also open adult questions instead of the closed uh, ended questions to allow children to uh, feedback and to know how the, uh, how the children has progressed. And for prompting, we have to use more questions to prompt the children to extend, elaborate and clarify on their ideas. This will help children to focus on thinking process to achieve new understanding. And Teachers also can give cues to, to realign children's attention to focus on certain information that they have missed. And visual, verbal, gesture, physical and environmental cues can be used in different times. And as for modeling, when teachers have tried all the methods above and the children still cannot get the concept, the teacher will come to modeling whereby the teacher will direct explain to and model to the children what they should do. Teachers can use think aloud method or show and tell methods to, to model to the children. Now, as for the school visit, I have visited a local school located in Miri. Uh, I have visited a five years old class with eleven children and at that time, they were having Chinese class. Now, this, this was part of the conversation that uh, the teacher had with the children. Now, the teacher asked the children, who can make a sentence with the word teeth? Children remained silent because they don't know how to make sentence. Now, the teacher then gave them uh, a sentence. I have beautiful teeth. How about face? Anyone can make sentence from the word face. Children show not confident to start the sentence. So the teacher said, every morning I brush my teeth and she paused and show action of washing face, giving hint. So the children continue the teacher's sentence and wash my face. Now let's look at another part. Teacher said, yes, you can write down and do homework in the study room. Sometimes daddy and mommy work in the study room. How about this room with bed in it? The, teacher, uh, the children pause and think, but they do not have any answer. So the teacher told them, bad room. Then the children say, bad room. Now from this observation, we can see that the teacher did apply some scalp folding in her lesson. For example, she has used modeling, prompting, eliciting, hinting, validation, feedback, and corrective feedback. But... She, she has some uh, area of improvement because our teachers need to avoid to give direct answers. In, instead of direct answers, teachers can prompt to allow children to think and answer. And teacher can try to give a range of possible answers for children to choose. For example, teacher can say, uh, what is this room with the bed in it? If the children cannot answer, the teacher can give them a choice. Is it living room or a bedroom? By this, the children will be able to think and process and they will be able to uh, learn better in that sense. And teacher need to use more ended question, uh, open-ended questions in order to challenge the children to think and to um, pro uh, progress from that. 
And as a conclusion, uh, scaffolding is important to assist children to achieve their zone of proximal uh, development. But it needs to be intentional and planned in order to maximize the benefits in children's learning. Now, as teachers play an important role to carry out scaffolding in the classroom, teachers need to understand the strength and need of individual child. Teachers need to be aware of the importance and teachers need to know how to do scaffolding effectively in order to help the children to progress and to learn more knowledge and move to their ZPD if it, uh, effectively. Now, that's all for my presentation today. Thank you.